All right, well, welcome everybody to yet another uh, of our women lead online forums that are brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas. I'm going to be introducing our, our hostess with the mostess in just a second. We are very delighted to bring you yet another exciting discussion. These are for professional women everywhere, and they're designed for you, for the busy professional business leader, and some of the sessions are going to be informative where subject matter experts in their chosen field share timely information for us, and other sessions are more thought-provoking, conversation starters, maybe a little controversial, you know, but topics that affect professional women both personally and professionally. So whatever you're looking for, we have a forum for you. So without further ado, I want to hand this over to Ms. Sean Marie Turry, and she's going to tell us a little bit about her and about her special guest, and then what our topic for today is. So Sean Marie, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Patty, and ladies, thank you for being here today. Uh, my, uh, my online form, my program is called Trade Business in Black, as you know, since you registered to be here. And uh, one of my favorite quotes in the whole world is by Tony Hoagland. And he says, some people think the truth is the worst thing that can happen. The truth is not the worst thing that can happen. And so... Uh, as Patty suggested, uh, some of our topics are, you know, pretty straightforward and business oriented and strategic oriented, and some of them are a little bit more juicy and uh, potentially controversial. So we are going to dive in today to our Truth is the New Black conversation with my very special guest, Shannon Vanderpoel. Hi, Shannon. Hi. Thank you so much for being our featured guest today. And uh, Shannon and I, uh, I feel like we go way back. And uh, this was a topic that came up uh, that was like one of those zingers. It was one of those topics that's like, oh, we really need to talk about this. And uh, we started diving into this idea of not only apologizing, but how about if we frame it in the, con in the context of stop apologizing. And so what I'd really like to dive into today, and Shannon and I will kick things off, and then as we do on our Women Lead Online forums, we're going to open it up to uh, everyone who is joining us. And so Shannon, I'd love to kind of hand it over to you and really dive into what was the, you know, what was the core that kind of brought this to the surface for you? And uh, let's talk about why there seems to be this phenomena of women in particular um, apologizing so often. And, and what is that all about for you? Um, it kind of, it, it started for me personally um, when someone actually said that to me, that we, you know, stop apologizing. And it took some self-reflection and like, what are they talking about? And I kind of did my own deep dive into it and I've had conversations. So my husband is also my business partner and we've had conversations regarding this because it's, it was a constant thing that was coming up for us was that, you know, when you say you're sorry, it should come from a place of, of meaning and not a knee jerk reaction. And then when I really started digging into this and I, you know, I'm, I'm super lucky. I have a lovely group of women that work for me in this company and I started seeing that with them and I would be like, stop apologizing. Like, why, why are, why are you sorry? What, what did you do to cause this? And really going back and thinking about, well, how, not only how can we stop apologizing, but why is the first question. And then how, because there's mm. so many different ways to discuss what's going on without saying, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. From everything of walking down the street and getting bumped by someone else. And yet you're apologizing. This is not right. about being rude. It's about being conscious of the words that we're saying and giving them true meaning. Mm -hmm. And Shannon, do you want to give an example of, of what this, of like an actual example of something where you've experienced personally 
where either you've made an apology or somebody has apologized to you. And also just give a little bit of background on what you do. So Shannon is an entrepreneur. She is the co-founder of Vanderpool Productions. And uh, you often find yourself in situations with some, uh, we'll call them influential individuals. Yes. So, uh, you know, so I think too, being in rooms with people like that, who you um, have the privilege of calling your clients, you know, that brings in a whole nother level of, um, you know, of worthiness. Like, do I, do I actually deserve to be in these rooms with these people? So can you maybe give us an example of how you've experienced this personally? Um, for, from the, um, from the apologizing perspective, we do a lot of things with customer deadlines and, you know, big, big moving pieces that, uh, there have been times where I've actually, I've had to go and apologize, but the way that I've dealt with it with this particular client from the beginning is that when I'm writing, I have, I have rewritten emails before because it started out, I am sorry that this happened. And then I was like, no. I'm not actually sorry that this happened because this was not something that came from us. So how can I frame this in such a way that I am still understanding the situation and that it is beyond our control, but doing it without, I'm sorry, or let me apologize because there is a time and place for that. And I have had to do that before, but it, it really was like completely rewording the email about three different times mm -hmm. you, because it's it is respectful and making sure that you are 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 giving your client the appropriate respect that they deserve because they do pay part of our bills so <laughs> that's important you don't want to say well it is all your fault <laughs> <laughs> as but, much as you may want to exactly but learning to reframe your words so that it is coming from a place of understanding and trying to be like, we are a partner. And so we're just trying to make this work for everybody, but this is how we got here. And I'm sorry, is not those words or I apologize or any of those things. And that was really like the key for me was in my emails. Cause I realized that's where I apologized the most after I took it out of my lexicon of the words it became about my emails because it is so easy to just say, Oh, I'm so sorry that this happened and we're just going to have to, but wait, that didn't happen because of us. Right. So, you know, really it has to come from all different aspects to really get into, you know, what this apologizing, this, this automatic thing that we do. And I, I still working with my girls on this and I do say I'm working with, with the, the girls and our ladies in my company because my men do not have this problem which is kind of the whole core of all of it is that mm -hmm. it is really a female like instinct and it is so hard to break it's a hard habit to break because it is such a reflex it is that walking down the street having someone bump oh i'm sorry or you know the client going this isn't what i need oh i'm sorry mm -hmm. uh, and, and instead of really evaluating where you're coming from, you know, what the situation is and going, okay, well, instead of like saying, I'm sorry, let's fix this. Let's just get the solution. Um, I think that is a really good place to start. And let me tell you, I've got miles to go um, myself. I still have to catch myself every once in a while. This mm -hmm. is not, but when I do say I'm sorry now, and there's something I am apologizing to for my clients, they know that I mean it because I don't use those words every day. They don't hear, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry from me. That when I do, they know that something, that we are taking things incredibly seriously. And I do think that we lose the power of that word when we use it so often. And, and that I truly like, I thank my husband um, for teaching me that in business because he, in, again, it's a male thing. They <laughs> But it just, it's, it's so instinctive and uh, it's, if I, it's like, I feel like it's my mission to help women understand how to approach these things differently because it is so important to use our words in the best way possible so that they carry weight. You know, we don't need to fill a room with words. We just Absolutely. 
have a lot of meaning behind them. Shannon, I, I love that. And you know, you and I have talked about this, that we're not suggesting in this conversation not to apologize. What we are really encouraging is apologizing when it is genuine and sincere and meaningful and actually warranted. Yes. You know, and I and I love when you you know you use the reference of somebody bumping into you. And you know, I used to say that, you know, I in my past life was definitely that kind of woman where somebody would be standing on my foot and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry you're standing on my foot. Would you, would you mind not standing on my foot? Yes. It's really painful. <laughs> um, you know, and just this tendency that we have of, you know, and in my experience, the apology is often come, comes from our feeling like we don't deserve to take up space. Yes. You know, that again, like going back to that self-worth component and do we really deserve to be here? And in some ways, <clears throat> excuse me, it's almost like a reverse thank you. Like, thank you, I'm so grateful and I'm, I'm sorry that I'm such a burden to this experience or um, to this place. And, and I just think it is, you know, I, I think that we have come such a long way and, you know, we've all talked about it with the, the, me too movement and everything that is happening and you know time's up uh, i think that women are becoming less apologetic but the other thing that you said shannon that i wholeheartedly agree with is that i don't hear men doing this no. you know and i mean i and i even think about you know relationships that i've been in or even with my husband when he's like what do you want me to do i'm like i want you to fucking apologize <laughs> you know excuse my language everybody um hi christy Kristen. Uh, but it's like, no, I want an apology. And then, you know, and that's the other thing is asking for an apology that we think is owed to us. And what's interesting is that he's not opposed to apologizing. It's that it is so far in the back of their minds. Yes. Um, that that is, it is so not their knee jerk reaction. It is so not their immediate go to. And the thing that I find with men is that it tends to be more often than not when they apologize, they really mean it because they do it so infrequently. Yes. You oh. know, that, that's certainly been my experience. And there are so many, there are so many things that we tend to apologize for. And, you know, um, I would love to open it up and, you know, ladies, if you have an experience of, you know, what this has been like for you and if, if finding yourself in that place of, you know, owning the stop apologizing, if that's something that you've mastered or where you're at with that, if that's something that tends to still come up for you where you leave a situation, you're like, why did I, why did I just apologize for something that number one, I'm really not sorry for. And number two, it wasn't even my responsibility. So I'd love to hear, um, and Shannon, if you have something else to add, please, please do. But I'd like to certainly open it up to the ladies as well. Or alternatively too, I guess another, another aspect of my journey on this is, you know, what would be helpful to help women move, move that word into an important place, because this is truly something that I feel very passionate about. Mm -hmm. it's, um, if suggestions or thoughts or like, you know, also why do we feel the need to apologize all the time? I mean, those, those are, those are things that I'm still exploring too, but. Yeah. You know, I, I was, uh, the majority of my career was in uh, the technology field. So uh, for a very long time, I was often the only girl in the room, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and I began to recognize that we would be in a meeting and if I disagreed or um, I was going to take an alternative path or, or um, alternative suggestion, I would start with, I'm sorry, I just don't agree with that. Or I'm sorry, I think we should do X. And it started dying on me. I, I begin the sentence by negating everything I'm just going to say. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so interesting. And I started listening to other women and they did the same thing. It was like, like we were using it as a placeholder. Let me in, let me talk, let me, you know, but we started with, 
I'm sorry. You know, like, well, no, I'm not sorry. I have the best idea on the table. So no, I'm not sorry. <laughs> but it seemed to be my, my insert my foot in the door, you know, and, and I don't know if you guys have seen that too, but it just is so common. I mean, it's just part of the lexicon. Well, I think it's kind of like what um, Sean Marie was saying is that like, it doesn't, it, um, sometimes we don't feel like we belong in the room, even though we do and we know it, but we don't feel it. Like there's the mm -hmm. bit of what did I do to deserve to get here? And we have that self doubt. And that's why you start with, if you kind of, um, and it, this is a terrible word, but I, I've struggled and I've thought about this because Sean and Mary, Sean Marie and I have talked about this for a while, but it's almost like a subservient thing to say, I'm sorry first. Like you're just like, before we even get to your great idea, just in case you don't like it, I'm sorry. You know, and <laughs> it's like, there's, there's very few times I have, I think I could count on my hand in a meeting. I've had um, a gentleman say, I'm, I'm sorry other than like when he's about to say something terrible, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I have to say this, but this yeah. is, you know, this is total crap. <laughs> um, that is probably the only time, truly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, Shannon, it's interesting because even that example of, a, you know, being in a meeting with a man who says, you know, I'm sorry, I have to say this. The truth is, um, they're probably not sorry that they have to say it, right? So again, it's it's more that it's more the way that we use the language. And I don't know when this thing started that we have to apologize or feel or have the sense of of needing to apologize for saying what we mean. Yes. You know, I, I think that I think it would be an interesting experience if we just really started practicing. So kind of going back to what you were saying, Shannon, like some real world advice or suggestions. So mine would be like, what would it look like if we just started saying what it is that we mean? And if it hurts somebody's feelings or if we need to revisit that or explain ourselves to a greater degree so there's a better understanding, what if we did that? What if we held the other person that we are in conversation with? What if we hold them capable and responsible of managing and navigating the conversation? Because it almost doesn't, it, it's not only that it, it takes the power away from us, but it takes the power away from the person we're communicating with as if they couldn't handle the truth, right? What is that movie? Um, not Top Gun. Um, a few, a few, men, few good men, yeah. Good men, few good men. <laughs> like you can't handle the truth. It's like, but we can handle the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing. We really can handle it. And, and I think too, something that I've experienced and on a daily basis, uh, if I'm not doing it, I hear someone doing it. And when I hear someone doing it, that is such a good mirror for me. But this thing that we do where we preface something that we're about to say with, you know, I'm not trying to be mean. Um, I'm not saying this to be a bitch. Uh, I want you to know I really like this person, but yes. uh, like there's this whole like dance that we do before we just say it. Mm -hmm. And again, what if we just said, hey, this is what I think. And we give the other person space to come back to us and say, wow, is this what you're saying? Because this is what I'm hearing. And then we can have an actual dialogue about it. And I just feel like it is so, it's so exhausting yes. to constantly, like, it's almost like walking around with your shoulders up. You know, it's like being on the defensive. I don't want to be on the defensive. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be able to sit back and have a glass of wine with my girlfriends or my colleagues or have a cup of coffee in a boardroom and say, let's talk about this. You know, and I will tell you, being a woman who started her own business at a very young age, um, people really uh, had an experience of me of not having a very thick skin. So I found myself constantly telling people, my skin is much thicker than you give me credit for. Because mm -hmm. people would always say things to me like, you're so nice, you're so sweet, you're so compassionate, you probably never get mad. And I can look at 90% of the women on this call and you know me and you know that I get pissed off like I'm a human being mm -hmm. But the experience I've had with people is like they're like I'm not that tender 
You know, my feelings are important to me, but they're not that tender either. So like, let's go there. Let's roll up our sleeves. Let's have a real conversation and let's start holding ourselves and one another at a higher level where we are capable of really handling the truth. Like, do you, I mean, how amazing would that be? Do you think this comes from, oh, I think it'd be amazing, first of all, but do you think this comes from this culture of like, we're afraid to talk straight to one another? And it's a, so, and just to give anybody a background who does not know me, my husband is Dutch, um, legit, born there, raised there. And so I've spent a lot of time there and they talk straight. And yes, they do. <laughs> It can be jarring sometimes. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is I know everything my mother-in-law thinks. <laughs> like to the point sometimes where you're like, I don't think I needed to know that. <laughs> but they, because they just come from a plain way of talking. And I've had, I also have some employees that are from the Netherlands that work for us. And they have made comments of that too. So maybe this is just more than just one little bit. Are we afraid to talk straight to each other and say like, I'm really unhappy with the way that you're doing this and it's making my life really hard. Why are we so afraid to say that to a coworker? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an open conversation and I think it should be encouraged. In fact, I encourage my employees to do it, not that they always do. We're working on that. Mm -hmm. um, but it is one of those things that maybe that is part of it too is to help and support everyone to speak their mind in a nice positive way without being mean or obstructive or you know like causing harm you know what is it um again i'm sorry i will apologize because i'm going to curse um <laughs> do no harm but take no shit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know i mean that really is like really important and maybe that's where a lot of it comes from maybe we just don't teach from from the time that our kids first enter school we don't teach them how to communicate openly and honestly with each other or mm -hmm. when they do communicate openly and honestly we shut them down because it's mean or uh we think it's not polite or whatever instead of instead of schooling them in a more excellent way, we just shut it down. I don't know. I'm, I am not a sociologist. I wish I had grown up to be one. <laughs> it's never too late, Patty. I know that may be my next career. Who knows? <laughs> I do know from something that I have read, um, the, that for women in business meetings, uh, unless it's like a small one-on-one -on -one meeting, that typically women need to feel like there's at least three or more women in the room before they feel comfortable speaking up. Mm. So part of it is definitely sociology, you know, sociology is, is spot on. Mm -hmm. um, it is certainly part of, um, you know, feeling overpowered often in, in, you know, I'm sure Patty, your experience is very indicative of mm -hmm. the kinds of things that they were talking about in this book. Um, and it was, I think it was in the Feminist Fight Club uh, book, if you've ever read that. Mm -hmm. And it is true. I think it's socialization and it is um, coming into sometimes a very male dominated atmosphere that can make it intimidating for women. And they do feel that they, they're intruding, maybe they don't belong. And some of that is not overt signals. Some of that is very, very subtle signals, mm -hmm. but we know them and we read them even if we're not conscious of them. Mm. You know, Adrian, I'm wondering if, you know, if a suggestion or feedback for, for women who are going into that situation, whether they're going into a negotiation with uh, another woman or a man or going into a boardroom and they're, you know, one of the only women, uh, you know, if something that we could do is have a partner, have a, you know, somebody in our sisterhood where we can say, hey, I'm going into this situation and uh, I really need to bring it, you know, so are there things that I can do or can I kind of run this by you or can I share my pitch with you or this is what I'm thinking about saying. 
you know, and really kind of, you know, and Susie and I you know, talked about this a lot over the last several years about, you know, going into a situation and we call it armoring up. Um, you know, it's like armor up before you go in, have your act together, be ready, uh, and bring it. And if you need to borrow an alter ego, you know, if there's somebody who you really admire and, you know, you know that they just would knock it out of the park. And as Shannon said, they don't take it from people. Um, and it's not about being abrupt or rude. It's about owning it. It's about owning our opinion, our advice, our expertise. Uh, but going in there and even possibly borrowing this alter ego, this person, and saying, you know what, what would so-and-so do? How would they handle themselves in this meeting? You know, and even from the from where you sit at the table or from how your posture is. And because I think that all of these things can affect the way that we're feeling about ourselves and ultimately can help to drive the conversation from a more confident place and from a perspective of like, hey, I am I am an expert in this particular area and I know what I'm talking about. You know, going back to what you said, Patty, like not leading our conversation with, hey, let me apologize ahead of time because you're not going to like this. It's like, then let them not like it. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a, a male mentor um, many years ago and he, he kind of became that person for me. I, I wish it had been a woman, but it, it was a man who, you know, pointed out to me, I think we were in some meeting and I finally had the nerve to say something ask a question that I thought was the stupidest question in the world. And everybody was like, yeah, that's a really good question. And I'm like, well, I, okay. So I wonder how many stupid questions I haven't asked because, you know, I thought it was stupid. And, mm -hmm. and he kind of pointed out to me, you know, that I, that he was waiting for me to say things sometimes and he was counting on me to say things. And so I, I thought about that many times. And, and like you said, Sean Marie, um, be somebody else, you know? So there were times like Dave Matthews has a song, you know, that it says, uh, sometimes it's better to be somebody else. And so I started thinking that All right, I'm going to go into this meeting and I'm going to be Mike. I'm not going to be me. I'm going to be Mike because Mike would speak up. And, and like mm -hmm. I said, I wish it had been a woman, but it wasn't. And knowing that he believed in me and he thought that I knew what I was talking about and he relied on me to do that then I said, I'm going to go into that meeting. I'm going to be Mike, or I'm going to be the, the person Mike thinks I am, you know, and until it became second nature. So kind of whatever gets you through it, you know, find that thing that, that works for you. Yeah. And you know, Patty, and I want to say too, for, for me, and when I've worked with clients on this about using the alter ego as a tool, mm -hmm. um, it's really about, in my experience, the alter ego is actually something that already lives in us, Yeah. right? So for me, um, not only is she an alter ego for me, but she's also one of my core desired feelings, which I know most people would say, how is a person a core desired feeling? But it is for me. And that is the singer songwriter Sade. Yeah. So I don't know if any of you know who she is or if you've ever uh, seen her in concert. Um, but she absolutely takes my breath away. Oh, Z, is it Z? Am I pronouncing it right? Yeah. Um, I see she's putting in the chat that she loves Sade too. Yeah. Uh, absolutely uh, experiencing her in concert changed my life. Um, she is beautiful and sexy and breathtaking and articulate. And she, yes, she's absolutely elegant. Um, and she also, uh, she was a clothing designer for many years, I believe, and she come out in like a men's suit and owned it. I mean, it just, uh, so anytime I'm feeling uh, in a way that I don't want to feel, I'll put on one of her songs and I'll have like a little dance party for one. I mean, and she just lifts me up and I have taken her with me much, uh, although she doesn't know this, <laughs> so they has gone to many a meeting with me. Um, and she has changed the prism and the paradigm of, of the way that I look at things or the way I'm experiencing a situation or a conversation. And what I believe is true for me is that I'm just owning my inner Sade. 
Yeah. Right. It's not like I'm trying to be somebody that I'm not. It's like I am tapping into that essence mm -hmm. that I see in her that I know lives in me as well. Yeah. And that that tool has been a game changer for me because, uh, again, I don't know her. I've never had the pleasure to meet her, but she strikes me as a woman who is unapologetic. Yeah. And, uh, and I want to own that and be more of that on a, a daily basis. And if I can continue to move a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit closer to my inner Sade, then I'm doing something right. She's a smooth operator. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I love that. Oh, snap. <laughs> you know what? And so are we. And so are we. Can I, I wanted to um I wanted to to say a comment about what you were saying, Sean Marie, earlier about how when we're in those situations where we can switch up that whole, I think we want to apologize because we want to be polite. It's like this polite thing we're trying to do. Um, but I I was trying to think where I've done it, and I can't remember being apologetic, so I must not have that problem. <laughs> but um <laughs> But I have called people out on it. I've literally, when I've had conversations and someone's, you know, we're negotiating or something and they're saying, well, I'm sorry. I've literally said, no, you're not. <laughs> and said, let's talk about this. Like, mm -hmm. you're, you're not sorry. Um, so what's the real deal? And it's really moved into some great conversations and, and gotten moved the needle where we've needed it to move. So I, I agree with what you were saying on, yeah, let's be real. Just call each other out and make it real. That's beautiful. You know, Shannon, you said something at the beginning of our conversation about taking away the, the real meaning of the apology, you know, of the I'm sorry. And, and that has, um, apologizing has a lot of power, you know, like when, when I'm teaching my classes and we're talking about communication, breakdowns you know between people and so forth or somebody is very angry about a particular situation just whatever something didn't go well and people are the relationship is broken um and i've shared with them i said you can diffuse a lot of that negative energy by simply saying you're sorry that this situation exists you're sorry that this misunderstanding happened you know that you um you regret that this disruption has happened whatever that i'm sorry means a whole much different thing than um oh i'm sorry that you're upset I, you know i'm sorry i made you mad i'm sorry it's you're sorry that the relationship is damaged and and that has a lot more meaning than um apologizing for something you didn't do or you didn't cause does, does that make sense Hey, that makes total sense and that it's actually part of um, something I learned um, in how to speak to your partner is that you acknowledge and instead of saying I'm sorry you say I understand that you mm -hmm. feel that way as a result of this happening and so you're giving um, credence to the way that they're feeling mm -hmm. but that mm -hmm. is not on you how they feel and so by understanding and going, I understand exactly where you're coming from based on the situation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is, and that's like, again, framing it, you don't have to apologize for the way they feel. That, right. Those are their feelings. Um, but giving people the space to know that they are heard is really big in those situations mm -hmm. because everyone wants to be heard, which is, you know, I, I get it. Um, but, doesn't make it right <laughs> and definitely is not something that I need to take on and be sorry for and I've I've really struggled personally with that within uh, my company as my company's grown you get more and more people you get more and more issues and problems and you know I mean it's just the it's the human nature mm -hmm. and you know really coming to a place of understanding that they need to be heard and I need to hear them that is my job is to hear their issues, their complaints, their thoughts, but also help guiding them in the right way to make sure that we are talking straight. And I do think that's what I, like, I, this has 
completely changed like the direction, Sean Marie, from where we were going. But it is, it is being frank, it is being honest, and it is being open to both criticism coming back. And I think that's also part of it. Saying those things, saying, I think this is my idea and I think this is a great idea, or asking that question um, can be really scary because what if everybody, you know, all of a sudden nobody, no, everybody stops talking and is looking at you. And, you know, I mean, it's scary. It's scary to put yourself out there. And sometimes when you apologize, you're like, the, oh, it's okay. Then, you know, I've kind of like, a, there's a caveat if nobody likes it. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, like, if you never put yourself out there, you're never going to get heard. You're never going to get, you know, to that, that next level. And I, when I was 19 years old, I worked at Vons. I was a courtesy clerk and we went to a district meeting and I had a question and the district manager shut me down. Now, again, I was 19. You know, this job was for extra cash. It wasn't necessarily paying for my rent and my groceries. And, you know, I mean, I could have gotten a job. I was so mad. I wrote to the president of the company <laughs> and who happened to live in Palos Verdes. I grew up in Redondo Beach and um, he said he was going to come by the store because he wanted to talk with me. And I got like apologies from the district manager. And wow. I, but that was a moment like everybody at the store was a lot, a little bit older than I was. And they're like, thank you for saying that because that, you know, like that is the right thing to do, but they were worried about their job or, you know, they yeah. did have to, to have that income. But I think I've always, I always try to like think back to that. Like if I don't say it then, and I'm unhappy, whose fault is that? Mm-hmm. Like I, I can always get a job back at Vons now. <laughs> <laughs> that's right You've got some clout there shannon <laughs> if this other thing doesn't work out <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> but it's 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 i think fear also and then you you had that caveat then you're just like Phew, i'm off the hook if everybody thinks i suck mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you gotta be afraid to suck i mean that's that's I've taken so many leaps of faith in my life and I look back on it. Sean Marie has actually helped me look back on some of this because sometimes um, one of the things I need to work on, I don't give myself enough credit for that. And, you know, it is really hard to just make that leap of faith, push that, you know, send button or pick up the phone and make that hard phone call. It's hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's consequences that come with it. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. But if you don't do it, you'll never find out. And I definitely don't apologize <laughs> about doing it. That's right. You know, Shannon, in, in listening to you, something that kind of surfaced for me was this idea of a non-apology apology. And, you know, it's almost like apologizing by omission, mm-hmm. by not speaking up, by not saying, um, hey, Mr. President of Vons, um, this district manager, you know, treated me like a second rate citizen and it was not okay with me. Um, Like, what about the times that we apologize by omission, right? And how often we have something that we want to say, we want to raise our hand or we want to ask a question and we don't. And I think from the perspective of being of service to one another, and in this conversation specifically to other women, how many women we don't get to empower or inspire because of our silence, you know, because we didn't feel like we deserve to take up space in the room or space in the conversation. And, you know, one of the experiences that I've had is, you know, coming from a background of, um, you know, abuse and rape and things that have happened to me that are not unique to me. There are millions of women that these things have happened to, but something that I've become uh, really aware of, um, and fortunately I've not done it in a really long time, but it has been sympathizing with my, um, sympathizing with with an abuser right whether it's somebody who is being abusive in a boardroom or in a meeting or in a conversation and that i and susie actually experienced this with me Uh, i had a landlord i was running these really beautiful spaces for my work and shannon you've seen it adrian's been there um many of the women on the call saw these 
spaces that I was operating out of for two years. We had a bungalow and a studio. And the short story is, is that my landlord was a bully and abusive and just an asshole and manipulative and conniving and dishonest. And he, we were wrapping things up and we, the movers had come and he came to the studio to see us and he walked in and I instinctively gave him a hug, like just instinctively. And the minute that it happened, the wheels in my mind were just spinning a thousand miles an hour. I'm like, what am I doing? And so he left and I got to connect with Susie and just be like, what in the world was that all about? And so again, just, you know, like here I am all these years later, like the things that happened to me, I was a kid and I'm now a full grown woman, woman. I had eight businesses. Like I've had all these experiences and yet there is still that thing that comes up where I feel like I need to acquiesce to somebody who, for whatever reason I deem has more power than I do. And the truth is he doesn't and he doesn't now and he didn't then but it was being mindful of how, not only how far I've come, but how much work I still want to do in this area. That I want to maintain my boundaries, that I want to be unapologetic, that I want to walk into a room and own it as if my inner Sade was running the show. Um, and I didn't do that in that situation. And, and I have done that particular behavior many, many times in my life. And this was, I don't know, three years ago. So it's not like it is, it's not like I'm that far removed from it. Like I still get to be present in this moment, be really compassionate with myself, but also say, when I go into a situation, how do I want this to be? How do I want to feel? What is the ideal outcome that I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and not, apologizing and not taking the non-apology apology route. Um, and Susie, you had said something too, honey. I, I think that maybe it's also that we want to be liked. You know, it's not only just that we don't want to be mean, we want, and I, and I don't think that that is, I don't think that that is uncommon. Um, and I think it is something that runs through all of us. Um, I just know for me, I would like that to be the thing that does not have to take the lead. To where I can say I don't give a shit if they like me or not. Oh, well, see, um, that's that's my space. That's where I live. <laughs> so that's <laughs> what I have a hard time with. <laughs> and it is cultural. Um, I have some Canadian friends, and that is like part of their polite language. Oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. All day long, they like walk by you, and that's what they say. Um, that's their politeness of how they express they're maneuvering around and if they bump into you or whatever. So yeah, there's that too. But Shamari, I have a question for you. I, and I just, I say this as someone who like, I, I like being liked, don't get me wrong. I want people to, to like me to a degree, but if you're not on board with this wonderfulness. Why are you here? <laughs> so I, I'm wondering, like, I honestly, like, I feel like I, I will do pretty much anything for anyone that I, um, that needs help or, you know, is, is, is willing to give as much as they get. Um, but where does, where do you think that that, because I think it's cultural, I think I'm missing that button. So that's why I'm asking, like, where do you think that comes from within us of really wanting to be liked and having to, and doing whatever it can to be liked? where does that come from? I don't well, I, I can speak for myself, Shannon. Um, my dad was in the Navy and I grew up in a home. Um, there was so much love in my house. It was unbelievable. Like I feel so blessed to have grown up with so much love and affection and genuine caring. And I'll take the shirt off my back kind of environment. That being said, the flip side of that was that my parents were very protective of me and they ran my dad in particular, ran a very tight ship. He was in the Navy, so it was yes sir and yes ma'am. And to this day, I still call all of my parents' friends who are still living, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, a couple of them just stopped by last week to see me, and it was Mrs. Sapp, and I was like, Mrs. Sapp, it's so nice yeah. to see you. And I mean, and I'm, you know, she has great grandchildren, and uh, it's just, it's hardwired in me. 
But as far as like the, the being liked thing for me, Shannon, it's more that I want other people to know that they're liked. Mm -hmm. I want them to know to such a degree that they bring so much value um, that I have had the tendency to disempower them by speaking to them in a way, again, like they can't handle it. Right. So mm -hmm. it is, for me, it has less to do about me wanting to be liked and it is more about wanting other people to know, I see you, I hear you, you are of value to this planet. And I also recognize where that doesn't always serve. Like sometimes you have to get in, you have to say the sharp thing, you have to be direct. Um, and again, it is allowing people the space to be responsible for their own feelings. Yeah. And say what needs to be said, but also be available for, you know, a deeper conversation, you know, to where you don't say something really cutting and then you leave, mm -hmm. you know, if they're like, well, like that was really harsh, then it's like, well, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. That makes, that makes sense. I, it was, it's, um, it's one of those things that, um, I really feel that I've learned a lot in the last, you know, 10 years or so since I've, I've been working with my husband and is that, people will respect and respond to honesty as long as it's not delivered in a way that cuts someone down. And, you know, maybe that's, that's, but some people can't deal with that still. Like mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I just recently had that where I was talking with someone and they took my words completely different. And I was like, I would no way said you were not doing a great job or being a great person, but that's how they took it. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's that filter that sometimes I, I, I don't have down yet, I guess I will say. Mm -hmm. It's how to filter those words that still have meaning but are not, I don't know, you know? you understand what I'm trying to say with that? I do, absolutely. Like not inflammatory words. It, well, mm -hmm. it's understanding and talking to people. Um, each person, if you were to say five words, the same five words to 10 different people, you they would take it 10 different ways. Yeah. And they're the same five words. Mm -hmm. um, that's been the hardest part for me as a business owner is learning how to speak to each individual yet still get my point across and um, and still hopefully have them like me and not want to leave at the end of the day. <laughs> okay, like the company, they don't have to like me. But. <laughs> Called knowing your target audience. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah there's a whole topic there right. <laughs> tailoring the message to the audience yeah right sandwich always in a sandwich <laughs> uh, i'm not, I'm, I'm not a stuff, fan all the good stuff first and then the middle the hard stuff and then good stuff <laughs> yeah i'm not a fan of the sandwich because you know no? that that bologna's coming in the middle you know <laughs> <laughs> it's just easier to take though yeah <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a fan of it either when it's coming at me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I just I wanted to make sure that everybody else on the the call has a chance to to speak up. I um, this is such a great rich conversation. This is exactly what we want, you know. So yes. if you feel free to speak up, say say your piece. If you um, are stuck on mute and can't figure it out, just send me a note and I'll help unmute you. But <laughs> just to make sure. Well, you know, while maybe while uh, the other ladies are gathering their thoughts, I just want to acknowledge that it's uh, nine minutes till. So um, if you've got something that you'd like to share now would definitely be a wonderful time to do that. Uh, but you know what, what's kind of just surfacing for me again is just really uh, maybe trying an experiment, you know, and, and even Patty, like you were saying, you know, like the appropriate time to use, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But what if we actually just tried for a day or a week to not say I'm sorry? What if we instead found other ways to frame that? Like, um, I wish that the situation were different or I want to make sure that you really understand where I'm coming from and that we really push pause on saying, I'm sorry, or I apologize, whether it is face to face or whether it's in an email. And we really think about framing that, you know, and um, 
Leo Buscaglia uh, talked about uh, why it's important to not apologize when somebody has passed away. And there's a whole story he tells about this, but um, so somebody passed away and there was a funeral and the memorial service afterwards and somebody had came to the house and they left this beautiful chocolate cake for them on the porch and the note said, there are still beautiful things in the world. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a really, you know, initially it felt a little jarring, like, of course you would apologize, but, but this person wanted to convey this message of that life goes on, you know, that in the, in these moments that there are still beautiful things in the world. And it's still something that I've, I've not completely gotten my head wrapped around and I love Leo Buscali and I should go back and read his book again. Uh, he wrote a book called love. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just think it's really interesting and it could be a really interesting exercise. Like what if we just tried it for a day or a week and girls, if you do this, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to, um, have you share with me if this worked for you, what you did differently, if you felt empowered, if you felt that it was empowering others, uh, but I'm going to definitely try it. I'm up for the challenge that I'm going to a couple things. I'm going to be very intentional about the things that I do so that there is less chance of, an, of me needing to apologize, uh, like being on time, right? Like what a concept. I don't want to apologize. Like, Hey, I'm sorry. I'm five minutes late again. Like, what if I just got there five minutes early? What a concept. Um, because the truth is, is that I'm sorry that I look bad. I'm sorry that my friends think that I don't value their time enough to be on time, but the apology isn't like, right? Like it doesn't have that weight. It's not, not really the best time to apologize. It's like, don't mm -hmm. apologize. Just don't be late. Right. So that's just an example, but I'm going to really uh, take this to heart and just be like, you know what? Say what I mean, hold the people that I am in relationship with and in conversation with completely capable of managing their feelings and also to be in a relationship with somebody where we can have that kind of really honest, unapologetic dialogue. Mm -hmm. And like I said at the top of the call, thank you, Tony Hoagland. Some people think the truth is the worst thing that can happen. The truth is not the worst thing that can happen. Mm -hmm. So that is my, um, that is my, challenge to everybody and that's my commitment for the next week i'm going to really i'm going to really give this a shot be interesting to be really mindful of how often it came out of your mouth you know and along with it the the adjoining oh that's okay you know when somebody does say i'm sorry oh that's okay that's like right. the you know and, and when you're talking about saying i'm sorry when someone's passed that's like the thing you would say is oh that's okay well no it it's not okay at all. It's like, you know, if they say, I'm sorry, you say, well, thank you. Thank you for being sorry. Why don't we just say that? If someone says they're sorry about something, say, well, thank you for being sorry. I appreciate that you're sorry, you know, instead of, you know, the, oh, that's okay. But kind of like what Susie was saying, what if we didn't? Yeah. What if, what if we just, again, said the truth and said, are you really, or you're really not sorry, but let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's also that piece too, that when, um, if someone says they're sorry to you, ask them why, um, and mm. start that conversation. Cause I do that a lot now. Um, when someone says they're sorry, especially when I'm like, why would you be sorry? You have nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. Like this, like, I'm sorry that like my sandwich really sucks. Like you didn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> no, if you made it, we might have some. Yeah, no, I but, do that all the time too. Yeah. yeah why? Yeah. Why are you sorry? Yeah. yeah. There's no reason. Mm hmm It's it'll be eye opening once you start paying attention to it because when I did and I started realizing not only how much I was saying it but how much everyone was saying it around me and it really just makes you start thinking why are we doing this? Which is stop. So stop apologizing and encourage other women to use your words wisely. Our words can carry so much weight when we use them appropriately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Shannon, can I, I also want to say they, I think it's also really important to acknowledge the things that we say to ourselves. You know, when you talk about the weight of words and the weight of intention, um, 
it is just as important to consider what are we saying to ourselves? Yes. You know, how many mm -hmm. times in a day or a week do we say like, oh my God, I'm so fat or why did I eat that? Or I'm such an idiot or, you know, I'm so stupid or, mm -hmm. you know, just the degrading things that we say that just put ourselves down. You know, we are probably a hundred times more cruel to ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, than anybody else. And so, you know, I think that a lot of it also starts there. Like if we're kinder to ourselves and more honest with ourselves, I think mm -hmm. that we are more apt to be honest with other people. True. Good mm -hmm. point. Agreed. You are enough. Yes. And so are you. <laughs> I want to say, ladies, um, uh, I really enjoyed the discussion. This is Cheryl. Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. I'm so happy yeah. you're here. It's so nice yeah. to see your picture. I know. I'm not picture ready right now. But I want to say that um, I love this discussion because so many times um, I've had to um, hold back what I want to say because people, I'm very direct um, in conversation. Mm -hmm. I feel that I should say what I mean and mean what I say, and I don't mean it in a harmful way, but for some reason, sometimes um, it's taken as I'm too ag aggressive or too harsh. And I think it's just, again, the male part of it. You know, they, they want you, I, I, I've worked in a male dominated profession, and I think that was their way back in the 80s of keeping us in our place. And when I realized that, because I was very quiet as a young girl, it's like, wait a minute, you know, I deserve to be here and I know what I'm talking about. And if what you say is wrong, it's wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, over the years, that's where my uh, inner uh, Cheryl Lista came out, you know? <laughs> nice. Very nice. So, so um, I use that, but I, I do have some growth too, because I still tend to, on some people that I know cannot take direct uh, information, I hold back some and it. And it's like, it makes me mad with myself because it's like, they should be able to, they are adults and this is for their benefit. Most of the times when I'm discussing things like this is for someone's benefit or because mm -hmm. I care about them so much but you feel like you have to pussyfoot around to um, say what you want to say, you know, mm -hmm. and I'd rather give me the truth, you know, just say it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But thank yeah. you for the conversation. I really enjoyed it. Cheryl, you're so welcome. And I'm so happy that you could join us today. Again, it's really nice to hear your voice. Thank you. Maybe we'll see you next time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You well, ladies, it's it's three o'clock straight up, um, and I'm certainly willing and happy to take any other comments before I wrap up our call. So, uh, is there anybody that has a, a burning desire to share anything before we call it a day? I have a workshop this weekend. Still, I need some more people. <laughs> if you know anybody, <laughs> you go for your ass, girl. Good for you. Uh, you know Cheryl, where, where can the where can the ladies email you to get more information? Uh, Cheryl at safedatingover50.com. Beautiful. Cheryl at safedatingover50.com. Yes, and the 50 is uh, five zero. Got it. Thank you, Cheryl. And I'm giving out five free tickets. Nice. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Ladies, get on that. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> and Shannon, honey, thank you so much for being um, not only my featured guest today, but really the catalyst uh, that drove this conversation and this topic. It was so important. We could do a whole workshop on this topic. I think it's a, a vital one. Uh, and I, I loved everybody's feedback. And Shannon, how can the ladies reach you if they'd like to connect? Um, well, you can always email me at Shannon at VanderpoolProductions.com or hopefully you'll see me at the next breakfast i think it's next um i plan on going but um thank you sean marie like you're also part of the reason that this conversation even got started you were the first one that i went to when i was like i need to get this out <laughs> um and i love the conversation around it and i really would love to at some point like i 
feedback is just amazing when it comes to this because there are so many things that I don't know um, and different genres and like I said I, and ages and you know backgrounds and um, I only know myself and I know that like it's it is it is very hard um, to take that first step to stop apologizing but Ladies, it will change your life. It really will. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's all make a pact for the next <laughs> no week. Lie. No lie. more apologizing. No <laughs> more apologizing. <laughs> That's right. I love it. And ladies, I just shared my email in the chat box. Um, so if anybody would like to email me directly, uh, please do. And uh, in the email to me, if you would like me to share your email with the rest of the group, uh, go ahead and let me know that and I'll get that out to everybody in the next couple of days. And uh, what I'd love to do is I'm going to wrap up our online forum today. This is our third one, our fourth one, Patty. Is this our fourth? Third. Fourth. Third. Fourth. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah. we're still in the beginning. Time flies when you're having fun. Our, <laughs> but they're growing and they're going to be continue to be amazing. And Patty, really quickly, when is your next online forum? The next one is this Thursday at 530. It's a virtual happy hour called In the Ladies Room. And our topic is going to be the myth of the work-life balance. That's, oh, a right. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good What's one. that? <laughs> I, I don't I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out. It's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> it must be. It's like the unicorn. Yeah. Um, Patty, if that. you want to share the link to that um, or your email address in the chat box, that would be great. And then I'm going to, uh, while you're doing that, Patty, I'm going to thank everybody for being on the call today and for uh, just holding the space for all of us being here. And ladies, thank you for your questions and your feedback. It was, it was really incredible. And so I will leave you uh, with these two small notes. Um, Stop apologizing. You don't have to say sorry for how you laugh, how you dress, how you make your hair, how you do your makeup, or how you speak. You don't have to be sorry for being yourself. Do it fearlessly. It's time to accept this is you, and you got to spend the rest of your life with you being you. So start loving your sarcasm, your awkwardness, your weird habits, your unique sense of humor, your voice, your talents and everything that makes you you. It will make your life so much easier. And that is by Anonymous. <laughs> and I'm gonna close with this. This is called Wolf and Woman. Some days I am more wolf than woman. I am still learning how to not apologize for my wild. And that's by Nikita Gill. The so ladies, go live your wild, go be the wolf, Stop apologizing. Thank you so much for having me as your host today. Mwah! To the truth, ladies. Go do it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Thanks.